Hello and welcome back to the 5 Minute Film Club and today I'm staying with Steven Spielberg and looking at his 1982 sci-fi classic E.T. The Extraterrestrial. For anyone that hasn't actually seen the film, E.T. is about a young boy called Elliot, played wonderfully by Henry Thomas, who one night discovers a strange little alien hiding out in his back garden. This alien, or E.T. as he is known, has been accidentally left behind by his friends and family during a foraging mission to Earth. Elliot, along with his brother Mike and sister Gert, try and work out a way to signal to E.T.'s family to get them to come and pick him up so E.T. can go home. However, E.T. and Elliot have created an unbreakable bond which sees the two being emotionally linked to each other. The problem is that when E.T. starts to get sick, so too does Elliot, and when the faceless government officials turn up, it leads to one of the most harrowing scenes in cinema, followed by one of the most joyous. Spielberg, by 1982, had cemented himself as the blockbuster-making director that we all know and love. He was at such a young age when he created Jaws, and that was a phenomenal hit, and kind of set in motion a completely different Hollywood system. The one that stands today was created in the mid-1970s. I think the success of E.T. comes from the success of his previous films like Jaws, Close Encounters of the Third Kind and Indiana Jones, and he took all of the things that he'd learnt in those films and condensed them down into pure cinema. I think a pure story, a simple story, something that was fantastical, a story from a child's point of view, filled with nostalgia for childhood as well. I think this film is so Steven Spielberg and I never, th I, I don't think he's ever managed to come get out from underneath what he created with E.T. He's always trying to get back to the magic of this film. I remember being you know, like completely drained from watching the film and when I sat down to watch it again this week for this review and that John Williams music struck up again, I. I just kept thinking to myself all the way through, am I ready for where this film is going to you know, place me at the end of it? That's probably why I don't return to E.T. What it brings out of you, I think that's my trepidation in ever coming back to E.T. again, even though it is a beautiful film and a joyful film, it is the emotions that it conjures up in you. And as I say, that's not just down to Steven Spielberg and in the way that he shoots this film, drawing the audience in in those reverse pans of coming into Elliot's face. The stuff that E.T. does, you know, when he creates the planets and makes them spill in the air, we're all seeing this from the point of view of the children. We're seeing it from their eyes. We're witnessing their wonderment. It's something that he does brilliantly in Jurassic Park. Sometimes he won't show you the magic that's going on on screen and what they're actually seeing with their eyes. We'll see their expression. We need to see the tears in their eyes. We need to see their expression for us to feel it. He shows us human emotion and funnily enough that makes us the humans in the audience connect with the film. And alongside Steven Spielberg and um, what he's doing visually you have John Williams and his music and watching it again I was just like when this happens at the end I'm gonna go. That build of the music when they're cycling and they're trying to get away there's a lump in your throat and it's there pretty much for the entire film. You have this pent up emotion and you just want something magical to happen. You're willing the extraordinary to happen and when it does the emotion can't be held back. I think also another element of E.T. is the writing, the screenwriting by Melissa M Matheson and I think there's a humanity there that the natural relationships and conversations that the characters have with each other I think that comes from her, I think that comes from her dialogue and the cast as well are absolutely fabulous. You can't, can't imagine the amount that the children have to do in this film to carry the whole story Story. They don't just have to make you believe of everything that's happening, you have to believe in E.T. The fact that they sell us this weird, squidgy, squat um, creature from another world and you have us so wrapped up in his success and his relationship with Elliot is a wonder. And the fact that 40 years later it is still perfect. It is a perfect cinema movie watching experience. It strikes me as incredibly strange that there are people of my age that haven't seen E.T. that weren't exposed to to this when they were younger. With everything that's going on in terms of popular culture and you look at Netflix's Stranger Things, season one is essentially the E.T. story. I love E.T. It is a fabulous film. 
it gets me every single time I watch it, hence why I only watch it sparingly. Next week, I'm going to be looking at another cultural icon, and that is Robocop. From the 80s again, from 1987, possibly the best year of uh, cinema. If you've seen Robocop, of course many of you will have seen Robocop, let me know your thoughts about that film in the comments down below. And let me know about your thoughts about E.T. as well. What age did you first watch E.T. at? What effect did it have on you? Can you believe that people haven't seen E.T. in 2022? Let me know about it in the comments down below. Please, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. But until next time, I'll just say thank you very much for watching and goodbye.